Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Sour Libations and Conversations. I'm your host, Dom. And before we get into this week's episode, we're going to take care of a few church announcements. Uh, Don't forget, candles. Candles are for sale. St-Angelus.com slash candles. Also, blog posts will be updated. New posts will be up there as well. So if you want to support, leave a comment, leave a note, or also buy a candle while you're there. Um, I also still have uh, the brand partnership with Slide Jewels. Use St. Angelus, S-A-I-N-T, Angelus, A-N-G-L-E-S, at checkout to get 30% off your purchase. You know, your first purchase. Uh, cute jewelry there. Um cute vibey stuff. You can shower with it. I don't shower with jewelry on period because I don't feel as clean. Um, and with that being said, I would like to bring in our guest this week. She is an architect, interior designer. She is a fashionista. She is loud and funny and witty at times. Yes, at times. But most importantly, I know she hates that word, importantly, she is my sister. Welcome, my big sister, Janelle Nell, to the stage. I'm funny and witty all the time. I don't know what this at times is, but whatever. Hello, sure. everyone. Sure. <laughs> hey, sissy, how are you? Um, I'm good. Just like I said, trying to pack for this trip um, while finishing up some last minute work um, assignments or... I guess assignments. Is it assignments for work? Whatever work. Task. <laughs> task. Yes, that's the word. I was task. looking for. Um, yeah. So you laughed. And... I didn't. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. So nevertheless, um, I'm going to be going out of town for a couple of weeks. So I'm just trying to do some last minute stuff. So I'm going to be up all night per usual because I've been procrastinating all week. So there you go. That I think that always happens leading up to a trip, and then everybody wants to rush and scramble at the last minute. So you are not alone. alone. Um, it's not even that. It's just you know because we travel so much. I am good at packing, so the packing part wasn't even like a big deal to me. Um, it was just all the other stuff that I forgot that I had to do um, that I could have been doing otherwise. So here, okay, I am. okay. Well, let's get into this week's topic. Uh, we're going to hop into a controversial topic. Um, Hunk for Jesus, starring Sterling K. Brown and the Re- Regina Hall. Ooh, I almost said, don't know. I don't know why Vanessa Williams' name just came to my head all of a sudden. Don't know either. Me neither. And now your mama is calling me. And um, yeah. And so Sterling K. Brown and Regina Hall star in this uh, funny, witty made you think a little bit, made you take a step back and reevaluate your church situation life. And it is open to mixed reviews from the average Christian. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say. Parishioner. <laughs> average parishioner. Yes, yes. The Saints was mad. I wouldn't even say it's mixed. The Saints mixed. was the mad. The Saints yeah. in general are very mad at this movie. And I feel as though they missed the point. Um which I'll get to in a moment, but yeah, I thought it was excellent, except for the ending. Um, do we need to say spoiler alert? I guess we should say spoiler alert. When we alert. talk we about will... certain things, we will say spoiler alert. Well, but I we... need to say if we're reviewing or discussing the entire movie. Yes, if yes. If you have you, not seen it, pause this, go watch it, and then come yes, back. There yes. you go. There we go. Thank you for, yes. So it opens to mixed critical reviews, you know, our, our Twitter, Facebook, Feeds every black person you know we love to do a hot take on something and so i would love to discuss this film with you because i enjoy myself i laughed a lot i text you throughout the film and uh felt like there were certain parts that was even relatable to our church um so let's break it down so janelle welcome again welcome back it's been such a long time how did you feel watching Honk for Jesus? I will say, um, I mean, I felt fine. I didn't feel, I went into it knowing 
not 100% knowing what it was, but knowing that it was in some form a comedy, a satire on, you know, pastors, first ladies in the Black church. I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about a scandal, an allegation, anything that was going to be, you know, discussed in the film. But mm-hmm. I just knew those bare, bare minimums. Um, I also knew it gave kind of like that reality TV, like the office type of mm-hmm. energy where, you know, there was a lot of, um, it was like they're being interviewed, you know, and yeah. so it was, you know, that's all I knew it initially. So in watching it, when you first start, um, you kind of, and again, I watched this like a couple of weeks ago, so bear with me as far as like the order in which things happened. Um, but when they are initially talking about the church or they're interview, interviewing both of them, and then you kind of get like the overview, you get the energy about like the closet that he had at the church with all of the designer labels and all of that stuff. So you kind of knew like, okay, this is one of those pastors who is more than likely misappropriating funds. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. When it comes to the church, you know, like, okay, you have this, you know, especially in these these mega churches, which we know a lot of pastors get a lot of flag, black and white, because I know Mm -hmm. people even had their issues about like Joe Osteen. So oh, it's Joe not, Osteen mess. I, exactly. So it's not a it's not a black church thing. It's, it's definitely a church. a church thing. Um, it does not happen in every single church. I want to make that you know clear. However, it is something that does happen. So you yes, know, it happens often. It it ha- it happens often, but I won't. I would not say that it happens more often than not. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I think when bad shit goes down, that's all you hear about. Mm -hmm. So it could be one or it could be 10 stories, you know, that they sensationalize where this type of stuff happens. But then there's a hundred instances where that doesn't happen. But of course, they're not talking about it. Nobody want to talk about who's doing right. People want to talk about who's doing wrong. Yep. So the perception is that this is always the case when in reality it's just not um so when you see all of that and then you see the whole like news clip of them having whatever allegations and so i was like okay so what are these allegations right Um, right again they are talking about and again i had no background knowledge of what this movie is about who it is referencing or anything i went in completely blind um so I was like, okay, so after seeing, talking about like the helicopter or private plane that he had and, you know, looking at all the Prada, the Gucci, all of this. And this is like your, your church closet. This is not even like their closet at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, maybe this is what it is. You know, like you were misappropriating funds. People found out, you know, realize like, hey, why pastor getting paid so much? Not that pastors should not get paid. Do not get me wrong. But right. should you be, you know, like, I feel as though you should match your flock. And if your flock is struggling to go into, I don't know, the goodwill to buy things, not to say yeah. that you should be going to the goodwill, but I think it is, it's, you know, it should be a little bit more balanced out. Yes, like, yes, absolutely, absolutely. If I'm in a goodwill because that means that I am theoretically giving my money to you and I'm still poor. <laughs> <laughs> tithing, tithing is a tough, tricky situation to navigate for a lot of people because poor a lot people. of people give their last now I said, God, you know, I understand the concept, but God didn't make me no fool. And if my license is about to cut off, I might not tie that money. And like, that's the thing. And you know, again, like if I can see this money being funneled back into the congregation in some type exactly. of way into the community, okay, but not your closet. Yes. Um, so it wasn't until the bedroom scene that it was like, oh. This is what this is about. 
Yeah, well, it, for me, uh, sorry to hop in. For me, it was when he touched the guy's face because for, when I got to the bedroom scene, it confirmed. Now, which I guy's thought. face did he touch? The guy, the he touched the young man's face working that, that that was filming. That was on that was later though. Oh, I thought that happened before in the gymnasium. Yeah, yeah, that was later. At that point. Okay, yeah, I thought that got... happened before, and then I was like, "I I must have dreamt that weird or, or okay. saw that weird." No, that but happened. I... Like, that happened later in the film. Um, okay. so the bedroom scene that I'm referencing is when you know yes. he and his wife, who is played by Regina um, Hall, are you know trying to get intimate, and essentially he kind of like flips her over, I guess. Immediately, I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah, and then she says, oh, I, I, was hope, I was hoping we could do it the normal way. Yeah. Or the regular way, normal way. Regular I don't way. Say, yeah, let's say regular, regular way. way. I don't want to say normal because I want to, you know, kink, <laughs> shame anybody's kink shame or anything like yes. that. Yes. So the, the regular way, the regular way for them. Yes. So I was like, okay. So I'm thinking, hmm. Dudes who always be fucking dudes want to hit it from the back. <laughs> like, and I didn't think, and even in that moment, I didn't even particularly think of anal sex. I was thinking just like the motion of like coming at it from behind. Yeah. So, and then like the not wanting to see her face. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not to say that, I mean, dog, don't get me wrong, doggy style is the move. But. <laughs> I feel like that's usually, <laughs> and again, I don't know how everybody else have sex. The only sex I know is my sex, so that's all I can say. My but, sex. Yes, but that's usually not the starter. You yeah. know, I mean, you don't start off sex flipping people over. Like, you want to generate some intimacy, like, warm me up a bit. Like, there's a, several steps and several positions before that happened I before. Hit. Yes. Yep. So, me personally, Yes, I yes. mean only me. So that I was don't like even okay. Think I've seen a porno where it just starts that way, right? Like yeah, for yeah. So you know, but like I said, <laughs> um, so in that moment, I was like, okay, now I kind of know what this about. So he fucking niggas. So the question was, <laughs> why you gotta say it like that? <laughs> That's what it is. So my question was, okay, is you know like. Is he having sex with younger gentlemen? Like, what what is the nature of the sex? You know, like, so in the next scene or a scene of two later, you start to hear, like, uh, what is it? Voiceover. That's the word I want to say. You hear, like, the voiceovers where they are, you know, having the legal discussions and the settlement discussions. Um with these about these gentlemen and you know you hear regina say you know they kept reiterating how they were adults these were adults so they, were, they were consenting like they really wanted to drive home like this were not children right. you know nobody was uh taken advantage of in that type of way you know these were grown men younger men impressionable men right but of right. legal age so, you know, that y'all not going to get us on no child molestation type of thing like that. So, you know, and people getting their settlements and their payouts and all of that stuff. Um, so, and I was just like, whoa, you know, okay, okay, okay. So now I know what this is about. And so even in the scene too, where Regina is at the mall trying to get her new fit, you know, her new hat in preparation for their you know, their big day. Cause you know, the well, whole part of the movie, $2,000 on a church hat, but continue. I mean, you know, it was, it was bejeweled and bedazzled. So that takes a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of man hours, <laughs> but you know, you're doing all of this in preparation for them kind of like reopening. So that's like the overarching theme of the film is that, well, that's their overarching theme is that, they are reopening the church on Easter Sunday. So after all of this drama has occurred and they have lost their entire congregation, yes. they're even making this film in hopes to garner some type of 
um, publicity in order to bring people back to the church. It's so like, it's like their redemption tour. Exactly. Like their redemption video. But the interesting thing, even about that, uh, when we see side conversations is that <laughs> are we really redeeming ourselves? Are we just trying to sweep this under the rug? Is there any sense of like remorse or and anything? Because as you were speaking about the mall, you know, Regina sees one of the children, one of the men that this happened to, and you see this look of like this person represents a lot of anguish and pain to her. And, right. and then, then things that happen to them, you know, however they want to spend it or whatever the interaction was, but you see that come over her face. But the entire time in these side conversations, there's this sort of arrogance about the both of them. Well, yeah. And, you know, for and I will touch on the redemption part a little later once we kind of get to people's reactions, especially mm -hmm. on the Facebook. Um, but. <laughs> For sure. You know, like Regina's character is so multi-layered in a way that I feel as though many women, and I won't even say powerful women, uh -huh. women who are wives go through because I think there is so much, I won't say pressure, but there is like a pressure like that you feel as a wife, because like the notion that society has created is that your role is to be in right. support of your husband. Correct. And, Correct. you know, because it's a whole bunch of women who don't, who go through similar things, whose husbands are regular degula, you know, Joe's. garbage man, you know. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> and they choose to stay, you know, they yeah. choose to stay because, um, so, so many things. Maybe they feel like they have no other options. Mm -hmm. Maybe they feel as though financially, especially if there's children involved, that if I leave, then what is that going to do to my family? Um, what are people going to think about me? Um, all these different right. things. So mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of pressure that women have to stay together in a, you know, in a marriage that is not necessarily working out or, um, you know, not what they thought it was going to be. And then you have the added pressure of being this kind of um, powerful figurehead. You know, you're married to a pastor of a church. You supposed to present a, a united front. Mm -hmm. um, so you feel like you have to support him in, by any means necessary, but also pertaining particularly to this character, she is supporting him as a means to an end for her own personal goals, whatever those are, yeah. whether it be, yeah. you know, that she wants her own church someday. Um, they don't really delve into what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, but you get the sense of, the, of that, like she has a goal too, whether it yes. is that she wants to benefit from being on the stage and in, in the pulpit. Cause she even says, you know, you know, you need to do this so I could get back up on the stage. So maybe mm -hmm. it's just the cloud of it all, mm -hmm. being in that public eye, being adorned by parishioners. Um, also the financial benefit of it and the comfortability of being able to go to a store and buy a $2,000 hat. Yeah. That's not nobody name brand. I mean, I don't know no designer church hats. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it ain't say Gucci Prada or whatever. But you know, it just because it doesn't have a main, you know, a label doesn't mean it Less doesn't quality, yeah. that crap, you know, yes, that, that dollar yes. amount. But That's so whatever her goals are, she has her own personal um things that she wants to get out of their union. And so she stays for that. But it's like at some point, where does it give? You know what I mean? Just like she asked her mother. A conversation that she has with her mother, which was about, a, ooh, which was a very interesting, powerful conversation yeah. that is had because it's so much to take away from that moment. Continue, but you know, but her mother, very you know, full of toxicity. Um, essentially, Say it one more time, <laughs> all the things that she experienced in her relationship 
that she too was not satisfied with, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but she stayed. And she would, you know, Regina asked, well, when did you stop? At what point did you stop just blindly following, you know, your husband, my father? At what point did you say enough is enough? Um, and she was like, the day he died. He died. And so and that's just like, shit. Yeah, that is crazy. Like, and again, a lot. A lot, a lot of women, of women regular, women, regular, yes. will sit up there and let someone suck them dry, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and not even not even in marital relationships. It could be any type of relationship where this other person is draining the life force out of you, and you feel this unwavering um, obligation to mm-hmm. stick beside them, no matter what they do. Because you have been conditioned to believe that, you know, if you love somebody, you don't leave or you don't yes. run or this yes. is what you have to do yes. or this is just what it is. Um, at the detriment to your own happiness, to your own mental health, to your own well-being, because in the end, you are going to get whatever reward you feel like, whatever, you know, comeuppance, whatever you know, blessings, whatever it is that you feel like, if I suffer now, I will be, you know, rewarded later. In the end, yeah. And it's just like, is that true though? And then then these people die. (laughs) And then you you are left with this like shell of a self. Yeah. It happens quite often, I think. And and it's still kind of taught in a way where you know people say well if this person is taking care of the bills you have food on your table this is happening it's just a little it's just a little tiffy and you know he'll get over it at some point and he'll he'll act right and it's our generation is realizing that that's a lie it's all a lie right it was all it was all a lie and they're leaving and i the cool thing you know, about a lot of us is that we realize that contrary to popular belief, even if we have kids with somebody, even if we've been married, we felt like we lost ourselves in whatever the situation was. You know, there are a lot of people like finding themselves doing the work and they're like, shit, this, I'm about to live my best life for real for real. I'm living my life for me. Because I think so much of our life is taught that it's about other people and not ourselves. And, and, and that's so, the thing too. And it's like, you have maybe, to find the balance. And you know, when you're on the plane, they tell you to put your mask, your face mask on first. Yep. That's the now. Your ox- oxygen mask on, then you can help somebody. And that's where people have it backwards. Yep. In order for me to pour into you, I have to pour into myself. So mm-hmm. I can have something to pour into you. Mm-hmm, if, mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. if I am empty, I don't have anything to give. Correct. And, or what if I and if I'm giving you something, it's piss poor. Like, mm-hmm. mediocre at best right at best so if i'm my best self i'm able to then give you my best self mm-hmm. but you know people think it's the reverse um so yeah, oh, yeah. Um, she had her own things um but ultimately you know we get through the film um and we get and, to a confrontation huh and then as we're still going through it we get through, we get to a confrontation. What's the confrontation? Uh, um, when they're outside holding the sign ah. honk for Jesus. So, yes. So they're outside honking for Jesus. Now, I can't remember if at this moment um, she has on the mind. Not yet. Uh, makeup. Okay. Not yet. No, okay, was, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So. <laughs> you know they're on the side of the road they're doing like this very much grassroots campaign um trying to get people jazzed up about their o- reopening Opening. honk for jesus you know they're out there trying to um i don't know preach to people um and you know as they drive by mm-hmm. so a car pulls up and it's clearly one of the the victims and they're blocking traffic. Eventually, he gets out. Mm-hmm. So there is like this face to face, you know, it's it was more of like a face off, so to speak. And 
the whole time that they are interacting, because you really don't know what is going to happen. Because I'm thinking, shoot, is this dude going to pull out a gun? Is he going to try to fight him? Like, what is it about to be? And, you know, he just wanted to say his piece. And even still in that moment, um, Sterling's character, whatever his name was, because I don't even remember, he is not acknowledging what had happened, one. Mm -hmm. And all he kept saying was like, I really was trying to help you. I really was trying to save you. You know, um, I really, I really wanted, I really, you know, in all of these things, but he never apologizes. Uh He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to apologize. It wasn't even about being ready. Because there's a thing. It's one thing to be ready to apologize. It's another thing to want to apologize. I don't think he wanted to apologize. I don't he think he was sorry. Because he had, but his ego was so inflated that what he was doing was not wrong. I and that's what I mean. I Honestly, I, I don't think, so again, I think there's a, other conversations that could be had and that people um, aren't necessarily, or they could be, I don't know, but that, that could be considered. So when we when we talk about marriages, people have their own personal agreements. So for them, for all we know, him and his wife could have had a conversation, agree, agreement, and a meeting of the minds. Like, I am a bisexual man. occasionally I would love to be able to explore that side of my sexuality Uh for all we know she could have agreed to that now it she might not have wanted it or she could have reluctantly agreed to it um but they could have had some type of understanding we know you know just no Uh different than housewives of potomac you know, uh, Ashley Darby and whatever, Michael. I said all along, they have an re- agreement, an arrangement. That's why she don't really be mad when people bring this stuff to her. Because Yeah, but but for me, I feel like that wasn't an agreement. I, I feel- definitely think it was. I think the agreement was, you could do it. Don't be sloppy with it. For Ashley or for... for Ashley. I, oh, I, didn't, I don't watch Potomac. I was talking oh, about okay. the movie. Well, <laughs> but, no, I'm sorry, Mike. I don't know if it was an agreement in the movie. No, but my point yeah. is, I don't know if it was an agreement in a movie because that's not something that they talked about. But I'm saying right. it could have been. So, in the regards of him not feeling apolo- being apologetic, you know, like like they said in his mind, you know, even though they were, there is a power structure in play where we don't know if he coerced them. And again, the only time we really see him come on to somebody is the it's guy that you mentioned thing. before and yeah. you know he was coming on to him like to me anybody would come on to anyone yeah, yeah. so you know he got an energy from him that was clearly you know gay people see each other so he clearly got this energy from him he felt like he wanted to approach him or at least let him know that hey I'm open if you open Oh boy, shut him down. And that was kind of the end of it. It was like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for all we know, that was his approach with these other guys. So for him in his mind, my wife is cool. My not cool with my my wife is knows this is something that I do and is has accepted it. These these men are men. They are 18 plus. Everybody was consenting adults. Therefore, where have I gone wrong? Yeah. To who? You know what I mean? And not every Christian has this, you know, thought of homosexuality being a sin. You know, like it's a lot of it's a lot of gay pastors and all this stuff, and people go to their church and go to their con- congregation, and it's not any of these things. So right. in his mind, he could easily be like, "I am. There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. Everything that I'm doing has been okayed. Mm-hmm. So why am I sorry? 
what am I doing wrong? So I feel for him, he wasn't apologetic because he wasn't apologetic. Yeah. But also it's like, if you're trying to go on a redemption tour and save face, I feel like part of it, you it's a role that you got to play. Cause just like Rakina, Rakina, Regina King was, Regina Hall was playing this role. Um, and new, and which also comes to head again, you know, like I said, like in her, her mom face as she is, you know, I've had enough and I have done this and I have stood by you and you I have, have humiliated myself because girl, yes. I ain't nothing more humiliated than a mind. Baby. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I would like to mind. say here before we, we, we keep going. Janelle, I wanted to talk to you about the mime stay thing. Yes, that was <laughs> because you have in my life. you have been a mime. Uh, so was it triggering for you in any kind of way, or <laughs> resurfaced any type of memories for you? Because I saw this scene, and then I saw you and multiple other people who have been in this space, and I was like, "Huh," and also the song. So yes, how did you feel? You know, I think. Um, it was a sign of the times. Um, mine was very heavy in the church, um, not just our church, but many churches. You know, it was a thing. I don't know what. I don't even know where it came from. It was like it was like it's a praise dance, but then I don't know where the mime part, like the white. I don't know where that came white. from. I was like, this just can't be a liturgical dance, and y'all just dance this and feel this shit out. I don't know who started that, but it was a thing. Like it definitely it. in the late, like mid to late nineties, early thousands. It that was what black churches did. We did mine, and <laughs> you know. Now I will say we did not do ours with like the black eyes and lips and stuff. I feel like that adds an extra layer of comedy. Not even comedy, but creepiness <laughs> like, it's to the whole thing. <laughs> but, but you know so for them to like pull something that was as dated of of an expression of your religion in the manner in which because it was like you were in this you know your your sunday's, sunday's best. best and you were doing something and then you are grown. Like usually it's rare to see like grown, grown people miming. It's usually like, what is it? I said it's rare. I didn't say it, ha it doesn't happen. Okay. I said it's rare. <laughs> but also it, it is a, a certain setting in which mime happens. And that setting yeah. is not on the side of the road. Correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for her to like, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing because she embarrassing. Definitely... this is this is 2000. You know, this is 2022. Um you are a grown adult woman and you are the the first lady this of lady. the church. It's not yeah. like you some regular regular, you know, you sitting up in the pulpit. Uh -huh. So now I have lowered myself to do this for you. And so it's just like, but I think, I mean, the way that she acted that role was, or that particular scene, like the, the makeup only added to her anguish yeah. um, that she was feeling. So I feel yep. as though, which is the point of the mind, like you are supposed to get all of that expression in their face. Like that is the thing, like they are acting these, you know, these emotions out and because their face is made up in like this stark contrast, it just accentuates the emotion that they are experiencing. So that's what it did in those that scene for her. Mm -hmm. And then you have to see her in her like, you know, like I said, her Sunday's best, and then you got this makeup on. It was just like, it was like the low of the low. But she's still... She stuck beside him. I'm going to stick beside him. And, <laughs> like, and, beside and him. even prior, the begging, like, no, 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 no. Well, we're not going to do is this. And then it's that pep talk, like, this is going to help us drive these people back to our church. And then it's like, okay, I want to be in this pulpit and I'm going to put this white face on and I'm going to go to, I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to praise dance to 
Donnie McKirkland or Marvin Sapp or whoever. Yeah. And then, and like then we that. had that confrontation. And it's like, as I'm like, you know, like getting into it. But that's the thing, you know, she, uh, she had her own means to an end, you know, because mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. if she didn't have whatever it was that she was wanting out of all of that, I don't think she would have done it. Correct. But, you know, I think that that particular scene, you know, it brought her to a new low. Mm -hmm. She's already been pretty low throughout <laughs> their relationship, but that was just a new one for her to mm -hmm. kind of process. But ultimately, she wanted to keep the eye, her eyes on the prize. And, you know, that particular day she showed up. But when I was talking about, um, pretty much we've gone through all the movie, uh, unless there was another scene that you wanted to discuss. Uh, but outside of that, I wanted to, I, I would like to talk about like her just, you know, going in, in the, after the mom scene, after the comp, the guy, uh, confronts Sterling and they're like, you said, having that face off and, her again being humiliated and you know realizing that this is this is the life i chose pretty much and i have shown up for you and you have given me the bare minimum pretty much and i have stayed i have stuck around and you have constantly have let me down and i i think what was interesting about that scene is is that why i felt like it was so loud and powerful it's like we go back to the 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 different dynamics and how women view relationships versus men and a lot of people's identity living in their partner and that's what i kind of got from that scene a little bit too and i was like damn not have mm -hmm. a self-esteem is a motherfucker a little bit. Wait, and not what? saying that she I said not have like having like lower self-esteem for you to feel like this person and why this thing, whatever he is doing, puts and instills value into you and makes you be, feel seen. That's what I was thinking about. Um to the point that I was making about the the notion of rede redemption. One, I can't even say that they were i feel like she was on a redemption tour for his sake for in uh for him uh -huh. like but he was not on a redemption tour i feel like he was very much delusional and um because again he didn't he didn't he didn't he was not apologetic he did not um think he was doing anything wrong uh -huh. this what has happened was a cause of his reactions or his actions and because uh -huh. people did not necessarily agree with it this has happened but i don't think you know i think for him it was just like we we reopening the doors to the church and whatever we got to do to bring people back that's what we will do even though she was always like he's learned his lesson he's not going to do it anymore mm -hmm. you know like she was the one who was saying that he was sorry and that mm -hmm. he has changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He never said that. Nope. And that is evident by the fact that he pushed up on uh, the little the crew, the crew, the crew member. member. Yeah. So you know he there was no lesson. So when I start to get into you know people's um, I guess review or feedback um, or thoughts about the film and how they, you know, people was giving it a thumbs down. Or like I said, the saints was, you know, too dumb sound um, on this movie. Oh, one crosses down. So one particular person um, who is a pastor of the church who was younger had commented about, you know, like while this, this film mirrored, you know, uh, Eddie Long, and again, I don't know nothing about what Eddie Long did or didn't. Clearly, he did the same thing. Is this, a, you know, I don't be deep in church uh, celebrity gospel singers or church people. I, you know, I go to I go to church when I go to church. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> when was the last time that you've done that? I'm a heathen. I I don't deny that. Um, but. That I'm just not of that world in that way. Yeah. So let me put it like that. So, um, you know, while acknowledging that this is something that occurs in the church, he was like, you know, the movie missed a huge aspect 
of the church and that, you know, the redemption that God offers and all of these, you know, like forgiveness, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. all of these different, um, you know, like the positive attributes of the church. And I was like, you know, to me, I'm like, but the thing is, you talk about the church offers forgiveness, but did he ask for it? And that's where I wanted and to so say really quick, like, I, because know, I felt that throughout the course, and even the conversation that you and I had, I said, but he never moved as if he wanted forgiveness. It was like, I'm this person. This is what I did. We, I'm, That's what happened. And we just not going to talk about it. And I want y'all to come back. I, and like you said, it was more so of Regina Hall's character saying he has learned his lesson. He was still moving about very, like he had this arrogance about him. Yeah. And, I mean, that just, and I think for me, I feel like part of the issue with some of the commentary I was seeing is that these people are human. And, I, and 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 that I think that's the kicker right here. I, I think a lot of people had an issue is because it brought a lot of different problems. Like you said, you still was appropriating church funds, like you said. <laughs> Our church knows about that. <laughs> um, but you know, different aspects, different affairs, different things that are happening within the church, and we all just turn the other cheek. And I feel like seeing it on the screen like that, big screen, whether you saw it at home or in the theater you had to really kind of sit with that and, and recognize that this is the reality, like you said, for some people. Now you might not understand it because that's not the life you live in, but this is these are things that happen. And you know, people don't like the truth. Well, and I think that's a lot of people who are either of the church or not the church. You have a lot of people who leave the church for those very reasons um, because they feel like these people are supposed to be, you know, they supposed to be Christ. Uh-huh. And while people are supposed to strive uh-huh. to be Christ, we were never intended to be. Because uh-huh. if we if uh-huh. we were all intended to be, there, Jesus would have never died for our sins. Correct. Correct. So the whole point, like I died to save you. You know, I sacrificed myself in order for you to be saved. Yes. You know, like that meant like, and you did that BC, you know, like (laughs) from you (laughs) you know, like when Christ came, you know, so you did this at the, you know, so that meant I didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. So you died for somebody's sins who has lived thousands and thousands of years Uh after you Uh so if that was the case then that would have never needed to happen the thing is it's like people are human yeah people are human Uh people are human People are human and you are supposed to believe in the word Uh not the people yes right and so you know, but that's just me. That's how I feel about it. That's how I take religion. That is, you know, how I approach things. I know everybody, there's a lot of people who will just blindly say and do what pastors say and do. Yep. um, And think that that is what God wants. um, It's supposed to be. And I just don't, I personally don't believe that. No, you know, and you know, when man gets involved, that's when the word gets muddy anyway, which is why we have so many different variations of the, yep. of the same Bible. Yeah, everybody takes what they want, they leave what they want, um, they believe what they want, they be like, oh, well, that was in the old testament. You know, like people, there's books in the Bible that you know got X out the Bible. Um there's so many different, everything gets lost in translation. There's different languages that, you know, so it's so many different things. And it's how people things. also interpret it too, you know. Yeah. Great Joe so- Osteen does say, you know, pretty much to like read the, read the word, 
get in a good Bible-based church and, you you know, and like go from there. It's not like he, and I can, fuck, I, sorry, I didn't mean to curse and say. Well, I mean, they had time. a whole scene in the movie when they sang Nook if you book, so. They did, but it's, <laughs> but that's also, but that, I, I think that people have to read. That's why reading comprehension skills are so important. Because if you take the time and really break down what is being said, like like we talk about that, uh, you know, when Kev was like, oh, I thought we couldn't go to the movies because it was a sin. Like our pastor said it was this, and this is how I was living. And that's not true. And he was projecting. People do that a lot when it comes to just basic things. And so it's a way to, for me, I feel like in a sense to manipulate and control. So it's up to you to do the extra work, the extra study. Yeah. And see how you can relate to that. And but a lot of people are lazy and they won't do that. And so now we have these conversation topics about this movie that is clearly satire that clearly triggered a lot of people is blasphemy now. Yeah. And the reality is, like I said, people be acting like that. And it's just like, how about you don't do that then? Yep. Like, it's, it is that you simple. Wrong, then you don't act like that. But you yep. know. And again, and it's a film. It's for entertainment purposes. And it's a satire, which means it is an exaggeration of true events. But, uh -huh. you know, it is skewed in a way in a way that is, you know, comedic um, and, you know, like bigger than life. Uh -huh. So, you know, it may not have occurred at that level, but it's right, still right. it would not happen. And so... I think the best way to even just be able to approach these types of conversations is acknowledge that this is a thing and it is a problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had a problem before um, these quote unquote inappropriate relationships with him. And I wouldn't even say quote unquote, because obviously the, the men who were involved in these relationships, I do want to talk about that too. You know, like I said, he was thinking because he is, you know, everybody was of age, everybody consented, mm -hmm. you know, that I did not trick anybody. Mm -hmm. They were still younger, you know, and impressionable people, impressionable, um, felt taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I feel like there was on there was certain, and they really didn't get into the background of the kids, but usually when Things like yes. that occur. Yep. There's a certain type that, mm -hmm. you know, people will go for. They will mm -hmm. go for the vulnerable, um, emotional. Talking about them being impressionable. Yes. Uh, so um, you don't want to negate their experience or whatever psychoses that they could have gone through. Correct. Being involved. In that situation, because again, we did not see the nature no, no. of the relationship, Correct. so we only know it from his side. But obviously, if all of this was happening, and particularly with the guy who confronted him, uh -huh. and because I think that was the one who did not take the settlement. Okay. Yeah. So it was one of the because I think it was five gentlemen. He was one who did not take it. So obviously he has some other issues. Um, he loved him. He was in love with him. That's how I felt. Maybe. <laughs> I, I felt like that. Him not taking it made me feel like he was like in love with him. Maybe he was selling him a dream and nothing came of this or whatever. And, and, and it was like the look, the pain in his eyes just looked like you took advantage of me. You lied to me. I'm hurt. And now I'm all like fucked up about this. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and a lot of times like people feel like they're the only one. Yeah. And, he, and him not being the only one probably really just, just made that pain even, yeah. you know, more for him. True. Yeah. So, which is why, like I said, when you saw that happening and then we're in the background, you're looking at Regina Hall you know, at another angle, it's like, my God, like she's seen, and you, you even felt like that for her husband, because he, you know, you see him get emotional with this, you know, young man and his eyes water is, he doesn't necessarily cry, but you see that emotion that come is coming to head with him. So it, it was a lot. And I've, I felt like 
the people in the part church. Of me that, felt like that was a show. Like part of me felt like he really wasn't emotional. I feel like he just was either maybe wanting him to feel like he was. Uh-huh. And so he put on a show. I don't know. There's something there that just seeing Regina, you know, at that different angle when they, they show her and then watching it back, I was like, shit, you know? So I'll have to see it again. Like I said, I only watched it that one time, like three yeah. weeks ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I said, like I, I just, again, like, you know, people in the church, like now we have this situation that's happening and it's similar to the Eddie Long thing in real life. Like he never really acknowledged or said that he did anything wrong. It was just like, these people was, you know, like like this, you know, pastor, they were consenting. They knew what it was. And That's what I'm saying. It's like, who was to say that you was doing wrong? Yeah. So according to who? Yeah. Because so, yeah. again, like I said, if you were following your own set of guidelines that, you know, like in theory, like, okay, having affairs and stuff, especially when you are in high power positions I mean, or ha is having an affair against the law? It is against your marital law. Yes. If that's what you agree to. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's, but you said you didn't care for the ending. Um, what would you have changed? Because it just you hanging. Like, okay, this car pulls up. You know, you have the the same lone five parishioners who have who seem to have never left. You know that I'm gonna stick beside them. Um, <laughs> a congregation that shows up, but then you see the car show up, and I can't remember if it was the same car that rolled up on them before. Mm -mm, it wasn't okay. And then you're doing these donuts in the parking lot. And then that's it. So I'm like, I mean, is somebody gonna shoot up the club? Like, what is that's what I was waiting for. I was like, I'm going to roll the window down. They're going to shoot it up. Like, like, what is happening? And, like, the way that it ended, it just left it so open. Like, it honestly felt like to be continued. Right. Like, is this going to be, a you know, in the next episode will, you know, like, give us some, um, a conclusion, kind of wrap this up. And it, it didn't leave it open in a way that left you speculating. So did people show up? Did people not show up? Like right. it didn't feel like that. It just felt incomplete. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean. like the last, you know, Lord of the Rings where they just like, we just stopped it. You know, the other Lord of the Rings. <laughs> they made it, even though it was three parts, you know, the other ones, it felt like, okay, even though we are continuing the story. We are giving you an ending to this movie. But the first film, it was just, it just looked like they just pressed stop. Like we reached the three hour mark. Stop. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I fell asleep. I, that could be a bad reference. If you, but that's um, what it made me think of. But you, I I felt like okay these these people are not I'm a, uh, they're not coming back to the church they have all merged and dispersed to different you know churches there's a new church that had gained like all these you know additional members once the scandal broke out after they had to close the church down and you know maybe even that like them shut you know closing the doors to the church you know, as they were going through this trial, made the, it, you know, them feel like he admitted guilt and, you know, indirectly. And maybe he should have kept the doors of the church open. Cause I don't be knowing churches to close their doors in the midst of scandal. Like when I think about a lot of the stuff, church has never paused. So to shut it down. So which, well, I, mean, I don't, but do they say that they shut it down? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. they said they said that like this is the that's why the Easter Sunday was a big deal, and then they really needed people to come back because they had no, not no, 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 no. That's and that's all I was saying. Like, so they had if they were under this investigation and scrutiny, I could see because you know you have all like the press and all the best stuff, so I could see them shutting the down the church during that time, like closing the doors because that would be prime opportunity for people to just be coming in and like ambushing you. So I can hella see them shutting down the church. Um, yeah, I, but I, I know in the, the, the typical- At least if they would not be in the pulpit. 
Yeah, somebody else. I, I think that's probably what they should have like, okay, we're gonna have an interim pastor come in. Uh and, and that and because those brief moments, the how people are just set up in general when it comes to whether it be church or or you know how people feel like they window is only so big when it comes to certain things, like you have to I I, I felt like they probably could have had somebody else come. And that yeah. could have been prime time for homegirl. You know, maybe if she wanted to preach to fully step into it, but he was just fully gone. But, again, and but she had to stay beside him. You and know? then this was, you know, you were just as culpable as he is because you were helping cover it up or you you knew that it was going on. Uh -huh. So it's like, dang, why, why do men always got a shit where they work or where they lay? What's that? What's the what's the metaphor? Shit where you eat. Yeah, shit where you was eat. Do you, I'm you just know saying. Okay, I was like, do you know anything about that, Janine? I'm just saying, as a person who always has liked the idea of an inner office affair, I get it. Huh. <laughs> well, as somebody who's had Never several inner office call, affairs, but... you know, it, it just be mediocre. And I'm just be like, I like you for this moment. And now you're trying to make this something serious. And I was having a good time. It but, is but it's fun, though. Yes, maybe somebody eating you out on your lunch break in the car could be considered fun, but I was like, ah, okay. Well, Janelle, thank you for coming back. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, tell the peoples where they can find you and how they can, you know, pay for a service from you as well. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Janelle Lovings. Um, my website is JanelleLovings.com. If you have any interior design needs, I am here to be of service. And don't be sending her a million questions. Pay her for her services. It is not free and it is not cheap labor. Please. <laughs> um, you can send me questions, but I, I charge you for those as well. So... <laughs> Listen, pay her her worth. And don't forget, guys, to like, subscribe, and share the podcast uh, with all your friends. Uh, hit the like button. If you can't buy a candle, a simple share helps us out a lot here. Um, and we will catch you here next week. Thank you. Bye.